Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Mutadaptive Plasmids. These are really cool items that you can find either on the market or by delving into abyssal dead spaces that allow you to modify some of your modules into what are referred to as abyssal modules. This is a random chance thing that can make some of your modules super powerful and even better than their baseline. It can also utterly ruin a module and it can do some really cool stuff in between. And this is actually the third time that I've made this video. It's been highly requested, and the first time I recorded it, I forgot to turn my microphone on. So it was a beautiful video of me just clicking stuff and stuff happening with no sound whatsoever. Doesn't really help anyone. The second time I did it, I got some really nice rolls, put together a fantastic video that I was very proud of, only for me to do a backup of moving all my video files around and ended up corrupting it. That was great fun. So third time's the charm. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Mutadaptive Plasmids and how you can use those to make your shipboard equipment even better. If you do enjoy this video, please take that brief second just to hit like and drop a comment down below. Both of those things massively help the channel out. They basically say to YouTube, hey, I'm really enjoying this guy's content. Please show it to more people. And it really does mean the world to me for every single one of you who takes the chance to do that. That said as well, if you do want to go the extra mile to support me financially, I'll talk about how you can do that later on. There are multiple ways that you can help support the channel and keep me making content like this. Finally, if you need a little bit of extra help in EVE Online, I've got two ways I can do that for you. First of all is a referral link in the description of this video. Click on that. You will earn yourself 1 million free skill points and give me a little kickback as well. And you don't need a new account. It can be a long-standing account. So if you've never used a referral link before, click mine down below. 1 million free skill points will be yours. Whilst you're down there in the description as well, you can also come join the Cat Skull Community Discord. This is where you can talk to myself and a bunch of other friendly EVE Online players, get some advice about the game, figure out what you want to do and how you do it. We'll help you find the content that you want to complete. And if you fancy flying with the Cat Skull Cartel in EVE Online, that's where you come to apply. Anyway, all of that said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about mutadaptive plasmids, what they are, how they work, and how you can use them to make your ship equipment even better. So first off then, what are mutadaptive plasmids? Well, mutadaptive plasmids are special items that you can combine with modules that you have available in order to randomly modify certain stats. This can create modules that are far superior to the baseline module that you consumed. It is worth noting, however, it can also utterly ruin a module or create something sort of in the middle where some things are augmented and some things are made far worse. We'll talk more about that later on. Now, mutaplasmids come in a variety of different forms. These drop officially in abyssal dead spaces, although, of course, you can just buy them off the market where other players are selling them. And different types of abyssal dead spaces will drop different mutadaptive plasmids. So, for example, a dark... Uh, a dark abyssal dead space will drop different mutadaptive plasmids to an electrical, to a tranquil, that kind of thing. So it's worth having a look if there's a particular type of mutada mutadaptive plasmid that you're looking for, which particular abyssal dead space it is that will actually drop the one you're looking for. Now let's take a look at one of these. We're going to go to the show info page on this and have a look at what it says about these. Now, the description of this is traditional EVE Online hard sci-fi bump and fluff, but it does contain some interesting information. So let's read it. This bioadaptive mutaplasmid tool is designed to interface with and alter propulsion systems, relying on impulse thrust principles alone. As such, this mutaplasmid could be used to mutate the performance characteristics of most afterburners in the correct size class. Triglavian bioadaptive technology makes extensive use of engineered colonies of extremophilic bacteria that are used to grow, harvest, and adapt various resources found in abyssal dead space. Artificial colonizing plasmids integrated into specialist tools used for direct adaptation of technology can be found in Triglavian caches in various stages of development. These mutaplasmids can be used to alter the characteristics of a wide variety of equipment types, depending on the strain and the bioadaptive tool with which they are integrated. The mutaplasmid colony integrated into this bioadaptive tool has begun to decay, and mutation effects will be less pronounced as a result. While possible mutational benefits are low, the risks of using this mutaplasmid are also reduced. 
And that's a very fluffy way of basically telling us what this does and how it, what it can be used with. We can also infer that from the name. Decayed are the lower types of mutaplasmids. Essentially, these are the sort of the baseline version. They don't modify the stats a huge amount, but they are still massively beneficial if you get really good luck with them. The one mega newton afterburner bit tells you what you can use this mutaplasmid with. It's that simple. So a decayed one mega newton afterburner mutaplasmid can be used with one mega newton afterburner mutaplasmid. And if we go to used with, you'll see that this literally works with everything from the standard one mega newton afterburner to the civilian afterburners, monopropellant enduring, YSA compacts, to afterburner twos, to your analog boosters, domination, federation, navy, republic fleet, shadow serpentis, Corelli, gisti, C type, B type, and A type. Notably, not the X-Type, but I'm not sure I'd want to risk an X-Type with this kind of thing anyway. But there we are. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is actually showing you how this works with a load of the Afterburner 2s just to give you an idea. But if you're not sure if you can use this with a particular module, just come to that Used With tab and it'll tell you there. Simple, right? What about the attributes? Well, this tells us what is actually going to be modified by this mutaplasmid. In this case, with the one mega newton afterburners, it can increase or decrease the activation cost, less capacitor required in order to make that afterburner work. It can also increase or decrease the power grid and CPU usage, making it significantly harder to fit or actually easier to fit. 5% reduction to CPU or a 25% increase to CPU. Finally, the maximum velocity bonus can be slightly reduced or fairly significantly increased. And these are all completely random. You might get nothing but four bad rolls. You might get four good rolls. You might get a mix of the two. Like, as an example, you might get one that has an increased activation cost, but is a much larger maximum velocity bonus, a plus 10% maximum velocity bonus at a bit more capacitor use in order to get it running. Now, that means if you're fitting that onto a ship that's already got good capacitor, that could be still a good thing for you. As long as you've got the capacitor to support it, then the increased velocity bonus is really the only thing you care about. Same with CPU usage and power grid usage. If you can, if those go massively negative, but you can still fit them to the ship you want to, and you get that massive increase to maximum velocity bonus, who cares, right? If it, it was just empty power grid and CPU otherwise, now it's giving you a bigger maximum velocity bonus. What about the other types that I've got here? Obviously, I'm not going to go through every single type of mutaplasmid available, but we are going to cover the four that I have for this video. We then have a medium shield booster mutaplasmid. This can increase or decrease the activation cost. It can decrease or increase the activation time. The fitting uh, requirements can be decreased or increased. And the amount of shield that it boosts can also be increased or decreased. We've got five different things that this can affect. And that will work similar to armor repairers as well. For a stasis webifier, this can increase or decrease, uh, sorry, will only ever increase the activation cost. So be aware that even a good roll on this is still an increase to the activation cost of that stasis webifier. It can come with a reduction to the CPF, uh, CPU requirements, also a increase or decrease to maximum velocity, the actual effect it has, or optimal range. Then, last one I'll showcase is a weapon upgrade. Here we have a ballistic control system mutaplasmid. This can increase or decrease the fitting requirements for CPU. It can increase or decrease the missile damage bonus and increase or decrease the rate of fire bonus. And you'll note here that these actually, you've got a bigger chance of getting the increase the positive effect than you have of the negative. The negative 0.5 or an increase of 0.8 negative one or increase uh, sorry a downside of one percent or a positive of 1.5 percent just so you've got an idea of what you're getting into but then how do you actually use these well you need to have the mutaplasmid and some of the items that you're going to mutate in the item hanger of whatever station you are docked at i don't think you can do this from inside a container i don't think you can do it from inside your ship either then you just right click and we go to use this decayed one mega newton afterburner mutaplasmid. So let's do that. I'm going to need to just align this slightly up here. And you'll see from this screen here, it tells us we are using a decayed one mega newton afterburner mutaplasmid and gives us a list of the possible effects that could be had. So we're going to drag this stack in here and have a look. Once that's in position, we hit mutate, and this will roll the dice and tell us if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And oh boy, that is not a particularly good mutation. 
what we have there is essentially an afterburner that doesn't have as good effect as a standard version. It uses more CPU and more capacitor, but it's a bit easier to fit on power grid. Theoretically could be useful if you really want an afterburner and you just cannot quite cram it in. To me though, that minus 0.17 megawatt, it's not gonna be enough to really cram that into a ship anyway, and those negatives are just not good. Now, because I put a stack of three in here, I can just hit continue and we can go again with another one. You'll notice it goes from continue to mutate. It doesn't immediately consume the second one. You do have to click it again. Let's see what we get the second time. Oh, reduction to activation cost. Oh, again, slightly better on the power grid, makes it slightly more capacitor friendly, but with a reduced bonus and more CPU. The more CPU is not huge. It's only, it's less than one teraflop. We can probably manage that. The increased capacitor, uh, the capacitor friendliness there, the reduction to capacitor usage could be quite nice, but the reduced velocity bonus, I'm not sold on that one. Third and final one, let's give it a go. Decreased activation cost, decreased, oh, ho, 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 ho. Almost maximum roll bet. Now this one I quite like. We've got a slight increase to capacitor usage. That is not gonna be a huge problem. A little bit of CPU and a little bit of power grid usage increase. Again, less than one teraflop, really not a problem. But we have a massive increase to our maximum velocity. That is a really nice roll. It may not be full green, might actually be more red than it is green. Three categories red, only one category green. But in my mind, you've got a much more effective afterburner with very minor requirements to actually fit it. That's good, that is a nice roll there. You'll note that when I say continue now, because I've now run out of afterburners, this is all grayed out and tells me that I don't have any available to this, so we can ignore this. Come back here, let's go to the decayed medium shield boosters. Let's try this one now. Use decayed medium shield booster muted plasmids, we'll drop in those medium shield boosters and see again what we can get here. Let's do three of these. Oh, much nastier activation cost, slightly faster activation time, more CPU, more power grid, but a decent amount of shield. It's not terrible. That's a lot of additional capacitor usage though. That's a lot of additional capacitor usage and that will only therefore work on a ship that has a lot of spare capacitor on it. I'm not sure I'll get much use out of that. It is nice that it's faster activating and better shield, but again, faster activation and increased activation cost means you're paying more and you're paying it more frequently. Oh, I'm not sold on that one. Let's try again, number two. Slight activation cost, slight activation time, much easier on the CPU. Mm, nasty on the power grid though. This again, is, this is gonna be nice if I've got a setup where I need more CPU, like I can't quite cram it in with the CPU I've got available, but it's gonna use a lot more power grid. This means on a ship that's got a spare power grid but not much CPU, this could be beneficial and it does give us more HP per cycle. And slightly longer, uh, cycle times, eh, not really, 0, 0.0 seconds, it's all good. That's not a terrible roll, it's just a case of if I've got a ship that doesn't have the CPU, but does have a load of spare power grid, that could be useful. Third and final one then, let's have a look. Mm, decrease activation, oh, ho, ho, very hard to fit that one, but a lot of extra shield. Faster shield uh, and more shield, it's a nice boost, but it's gonna be significantly harder to fit. An additional 14.5 teraflops off. If I can fit it to a ship, that's a really nice module, but those additional costs are not nice. Oh, okay. Let's move on to the stasis webifiers. I don't normally rate stasis webifiers in mutaplasmids because your benefits aren't necessarily that good, but let's have a look. Much worse activation cost, easier to fit by one teraflop, it's a worse web than usual, and it's got uh, 92 meters of additional optimal range. Really not worth it. Let's have a look at the third one. Worse activation, worse CPU, worse maximum velocity, uh, slightly better optimal range, still really not much. And this is why I don't rate using these, because you're always getting a worse activation cost. Even the positive is still worse than it would be normally. Maximum velocity bonus is basically the best thing you can get, and it's only like one or two percent. And the optimal range again is literally meters. It's like an additional kilometer. Okay, if you're maybe putting a Federation Navy or something in here, then that optimal range could actually go quite nicely. Third and final one. Oh man. Oh, we got half a kilometer of additional range and everything else is worse. 
yeah, I really don't rate Stasis Webify Mutaplasmids. It's no wonder they're so cheap on the market. Finally, let's have a look at those Ballistic Control System ones. Again, we can get slightly better fitting and increase to our bonuses. Let's have a look at what we get. So this one, more CPU, significantly better damage and better rate of fire. Again, if we've got six additional Teraflops of CPU, that could be nice. Additional damage is always nice. Oh, oh, yeah, no, that's just a trash one. That is literally trash. We have just made the module worse. We can ignore that, throw that away. Can't sell these on the market, remember. Anything that has been mutated, so Abyssal modules cannot be sold on the market. Um, so you're basically just going to trash them or try and sell them in contracts. Oh, oh, that's not bad either. Again, slightly increase our oh, eight teraflops of additional CPU usage, but we do have a bit of additional damage bonus and rate of fire bonus. That's not awful. And there we go. That's how those work. And you'll see that once you've made these, they change to having this red icon in the top left to let you know that they are abyssal modules. And if you mouse over them as well, you can also see how those have been affected. So it's a nice, easy way to sort of mouse over some of these and go, oh yeah, that, that one's not good. I can just trash that or reprocess it or whatever. All kinds of stuff you can do, like where was it? Yeah, like that one. We can just get rid of that. That is just a piece of crap. No one is ever going to want to use that over a standard ballistic control system too. We just literally made a Ballistic Control System 2 worse than it would have been otherwise. Anyway, folks, that is everything you need to know about Mute Adaptive Plasmids. They are a really cool way of modifying your gear, though you do have to be aware that, yeah, some of them aren't particularly worth it, like the Stasis Webifiers. You may get a really good roll where the module is just significantly better than it was before. You may get a roll where the module is better and you don't mind the downsides. You may get a situation like this one where the module is just absolute trash and you almost wish that you just hadn't done it. So bear that in mind. Just bear that in mind. As long as you are aware of the risks and you're going in with that sort of understanding of risk mitigation, well, what you get is up to you. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about uh, Mute Adaptives. What is the best Mute Adaptive you've ever used? What kind of stuff did you get? I am currently running a contest on my Discord as well. If you come into the Catskull Discord, get the EVE Online roll and go down to the Weekend Pack giveaway, I'm giving away 10 weekend packs to anyone who just tells me what they are enjoying most in EVE Online right now. A weekend pack is 50 plex and three days of Omega. Really useful while the Winter Nexus event is ongoing because you can activate that right at the end of the Winter Nexus and claim all of the Omega rewards that you would have unlocked had you been Omega the entire time. They are all retroactive rewards. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one. Do let me know in the comment section down below how you get on. Oh, before we go, sorry. If you do want to support the channel financially, how do you do that? Well, I've got a Redbubble merchandise store if you fancy getting yourself some cool Captain Benzie swag, like a mug or a t-shirt, a hoodie, stickers, notebooks, you name it. Some cool designs there. Um, and I just get a little bit of kickback from that as well if you do decide that you want to make a small purchase. I do have a... Uh, a PayPal tip jar. If you fancy just tossing in the price of a cup of coffee or something, just to help keep me energized to keep making content like this for you all. And if you do want to go the extra mile, I have a Patreon page as well, where you can get your name in the stars for as little as $5 a month. You can pledge from as little as a dollar a month, but the name in the stars comes at $5. Everyone who does that gets their name in the credits at the end of every video. And I do often do little posts talking about my real life. So if you want to get to know the captain behind the screen, that's your way to find out more. Anyway, all that said and done, thank you to everyone who does support. You're going to see your names on from Patreon in just a second. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.